Hey guys, I'm here at the IBC 23 show and unfortunately I have neither microphone nor anybody to hold the camera so I'll see if I can make a little video for you guys with my iPhone. This ladies and gentlemen is Casper's Cave at the 11A30 booth. We have a Canon CRN100 Dream Chip SM1 Zoom Mini and ATEM Switcher. These are the devices we can control with the reactor and we are super excited about this. I am looking so much forward to creating videos that will show you how one software multiple panels and how easy it is to actually control things just like you would configure a stream deck that's something coming up in the YouTube channel right here I'm showing how many devices of different sorts can be raw panel enabled you see we have an OC 31 we have Frameshot Pro we also have some hidden devices there's uh, stream decks we have tally land we have touch solutions and they are all shown over here so um, this is a Dentatron display it's called U ready one U it is showing basically a full screen web browser with a touch UI so you can see that this raw panel enabled touch screen is available inside reactor you have the same here on an iPad so it's just a slightly different uh, grid this is a loop deck that's also raw panel enabled through the MacBook over here and of course we have the blue pill being the centerpiece of everything and this is actually the one providing the two touch screens you see also the one for that if that was turned on but most Significantly, in this part of the booth, you see 10 USB devices. And it starts over here with a Stream Deck, super popular as you know, but then it goes on and we have 5X key devices shown. They are all raw panel enabled. You can access them over the network, integrate them inside reactor. This is standard USB foot pedal. This is an X key switch. It goes to this little USB dongle kind of thing in this USB hub, which goes all the way over into the blue pill, which basically converts all these USB devices into raw panel compliant networked devices. Foot pedal from X keys, we have GPIO, we have Shuttle Pro, we have Stream Deck Mini, all of these. Now on the front row, we have Tallyman, which is Wi-Fi tally lamps available in raw panel. We have also Micro Smart H, which is an old product from Skahoy that is uh, having these smart switches. Uh, it's waiting for us to connect on raw panel, so it's an old product we don't sell anymore. And this is a classic, a Skahoy legacy product, C31. I think this is like seven or eight years old. It's from the very beginning of Skahoy back in the tens. And here we have Frameshot Pro with the fancy red sides. We have Recreation Live, my own demo model from back home, and an RCP Mini, or RCP Pro Mini, which is essentially the world-leading Skahoy RCP joystick with display in, but in a slimmer version, it is basically two-thirds of an RCP Pro. So with this one, you can have three RCPs where you could otherwise only have two of the classic form factor that most manufacturers have. So all of this is demonstrated not only for its ability to actually connect into um, being raw panel enabled devices. Uh, let's take, just because it's fun, the gamepad. You can see if I connect to the gamepad, I have it here. If I if I press buttons on the gamepad, you can see it's reacting over here from my uh, Explorer. So what else could we do? We could do the tally lamps. I think that's a nice little one. So connect to, sorry, from my finger in the middle of the picture. So this is the tally lamps. Let's just do one of the lamps over here. I am now turning it on to make it red. And you can see if I pick the other lamp. So this is the raw panel enabled tally lamps. Just make this one green and it lights up green. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, what about the touch screens? That's interesting. We have this uh, touch screen. Um, what is it called? Let's do the one on the one you ready thing. So I connect to that guy and you can see that on this touch screen, although it's currently enabled by um, having some, some script, uh, script uh, demo script, you can see that I'm also able to press the keys and see triggers come in. And obviously I could, if I wanted to, send graphics and color back to the touch screen using these buttons, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense since it is quickly being overridden by my demo script. So that's Casper's Corner showing all this raw panel connectivity, which can all go into Reactor 2.0. So Reactor 2.0 is essentially this broadcast control system that will let you integrate not only Skyhoy panels, but also almost anything you can imagine. So that was a good reason to develop raw panel, right? Now, let's look around the booth. What else is here? So we have a PDC corner with a PDC West Blue Pill version, by the way. So full Linux inside of this guy, super exciting. 
Lubion server, we have PVC fly, we have Frame Shop Pro along with the PVC Pro, where you have the visual uh, thumbnails and presets. Yep. The cameras we show is the PTX3 with a Blackmagic camera on top. So here we have a combo device where two things are working as one on the controllers because you see, uh, where is it, this guy. Okay, so when I press this one, you can basically control the camera, the shading on these buttons, but you can also use the joystick to actually move the head as I'm doing right now. So that's a combo device for you. The same is true for the NBOT and the Lumix camera on top. We have the Bird Dog P200. We have Canon flagship camera. We have a Panasonic flagship camera. We have Sony FR7 as well. Of course, it's shaded by the classic Skyhoy SP Pro. We have PC Extreme right here. And if we move over to the shading table, we see beautiful Ari and Mira camera. We also see the red Komodo camera here. And they are, of course, controlled by the RCP V2 with motorized fader here. So when we change cameras, we see that fader move into position. Super cool. Then we have also, of course, the Skahoy RCP Pro for shading. Let me see if I change cameras up on the camera selector. We have Komodo X, we have SM1. SSM 500 slow motion camera with lens gears. So if I'm actually using this, we'll see these gears are moving around. So you see, this is control of the Atom One SSM 500. The gears are moving as I'm now pulling the joystick. It is actually controlling this lens motor. So replay on the SSM 500 that has internal recording. I think it's a 500 frames per second camera and you can record and replay on the XC8 using this to control the speed, you have jog shuttle. Over here we have an example of live production using the Master Key 1 along with a uh, PVC Pro. And right now these guys, these gentlemen are having fun with the magnetic modules. Can I see them snap together? Yeah. The beer holder? I'm told by our support department this has the least support of everything we our, sell. Our most, our most successful product ever. So great. Zero support cases. But next time a little bit bigger so you can put your beer on top. Okay, <laughs> we will notice that. But we have blanks over here. So if I move on over to the mega panel table. Oh, that is Colorfly. Beautiful, right? With all the, the faders. We can uh, shade many cameras on that one. More RCP Pro. Oh, yeah, we have a Pro Standard and a Pro Custom version. The Custom version essentially has a more snappy joystick, so the tactility of pushing the joystick is a little more, you know, you feel it a little more, you hear it a little more. The encoders up here are smooth. Yeah, you can have smooth encoders on Skyhoy controllers. We normally don't recommend them. Why? Because if you're over here and you have a number of options you want to go between, it's not so great to have a smooth encoder to choose those since you like to feel this click, click, click. On a smooth encoder, it is on the other side. Very cool to have it when you have value ranges like these that you want to adjust because there you don't mind the steps. You actually want to feel that it's like smooth. We have some swag here. I'm sorry I cannot give that to you guys on YouTube. But then we move on to the mega panel. Wow, 3ME mega panel hooked up with k and built into a table. Isn't that just a beauty? This is a PDC control section. We have set it up also to do visual preset recall on this uh, frame shot plus but otherwise we simply have three MEs of Keros control isn't that awesome it's just beautiful so actually this is an MK48 master key 48 this is the T block right T block left T block right and these modules are normally found just look look at this this one from here to here that is an, an, an master key 48 and it's usually found in this form factor this is our default version but what you get with the mega panel is essentially in in this version special version they are encased a little bit differently so that they can sit smooth together and this is why we have made this display where you can easily see how easy you can construct a, an underlying um, construction for supporting the modules because the feet of these are snapping magnetically onto those nail plates right there so they sit really tight in place but it's also so easy to make this built-in uh, construction it just takes a little bit of craftsmanship and then you're good now master key one is shown here with Keras. we have tricast we have black magic design and we do have vmix over here for switching control so that is basically the switching side of the skahoy booth thanks for joining me on that and then the final thing I want to show you is essentially 
what is below our logo wall. We have our rack units on display. We have rack pro to rack control uno. They are basically all here, all the major ones. And they are working with the little router, which are controlled by SWPOA. So these are giving us examples of how you can do routing by selecting your outputs and then routing your inputs on these panels, all right? Moving on, we have very important TCP link for ATEM. This is your way to do ATEM integration with third-party systems, converting the tricky ATEM protocol into a simple TCP-based protocol. Ethernet GPI link for GPIO on the side here, Ethernet SDI link that will take camera commands over Ethernet and convert them to SDI for Blackmagic cameras. We have the wave port, which is essentially used to control um, Direct Out, which has the Prodigy, um, Prodigy MP, it's called, uh, from Direct Out. And the same with Callfly, actually, also controlling the same. I mean, sometimes I have even faders moving across these two. Yeah, you can see I'm moving a fader over here by moving this one. Yeah, we're just showing they are basically controlling the same. Okay, it wasn't exactly a quick tour, but I am uh, going to share much more details on individual pieces, especially from Casper's Cave technology on the YouTube channel. I'm looking forward to that, so stay tuned for more content coming up this fall.